Ah yes, FNAF AR Special Delivery, a good example of a game's road to decline in quality. This game has flushed down the toilet ever since June 2020. At first, this game might not be as bad as it looks, but once you dive into this game's history, the quality itself, and view it as an ethical standpoint, you'll quickly realize how awful it's become. But this wasn't always the case. When the game first came out in November 2019, it was admittedly a good game that was straight to the point and exactly what we wanted, an augmented reality game of Five Nights at Freddy's. In fact, this game practically carried FNAF on slakes during the way for Security Breach in 2020, and it even got some older fans back into the franchise. This game did have its bugs and small issues, but then again, no game is perfect upon launch, and most of them did get fixed. Illumix did mishandle some things, but they were taken care of once they got acknowledged. FNAF VR in its first 6 months was a bit flawed, but it was still a good game that was straight to the point. Unfortunately, not everything lasts forever. Around June 2020 was when the, the game started to show a decline in quality. This decline wasn't very noticeable, however, and the game did go up now and again, like some of the skins, characters being added to the game like Blora, the Jackos, and especially Plush Trap. Even Gold Freddy found a way to make it into the game. But when 2021 rolled over, this game tanked. And it tanked really hard. And by 2022, the game hasn't received any updates, with the last update being F Funtime Friday in December 2021. The game is now considered abandoned by many people, and it's been speculated that Illumix have moved on to other things, leaving the fandom and the game in the dust. Many people have done rants related to this game and the company, but I thought I'd do a video discussing every problem that plagued this game, but I won't be doing it alone, as I'm joined by one of my good friends. How's up everyone, How's it Gaming here, and I'll be joining Andrew on this video, discussing every problem that ruined this once decent game, take turns discussing them, and how they started the game's decline. There's not much else to say that hasn't been said, so let's get started. Lack of new characters. FNAF VR was liked for many things, the concepts it brought to the table, the emergence of the technology, and of course, the characters and what they brought to the game. The game already had a bunch of characters present in the game before Toy Chica, though they all acted the same with the exception of Springtrap, but with every new character introduced, they would try to spice up the gameplay like the Ferny Mask, the Sound Meter, the screen becoming foggy or frozen, collecting parts, or even straight up mashing everything together. Before March 2020, Illumix would introduce at least one new character a month, this being characters from the toy animatronics. Yeah, that wasn't until COVID happened and the character roster would go on hiatus and we would get nothing but skins from March all the way into September. When Ballora made her way into the game to kick off the Dark Circus event, we still got a lot of skins after that. But one didn't overtake the other. However, once 2021 rolled over, characters started to become more irrelevant and the last thing on the Lumix's mind. Why is this a problem you may ask? Well, the game started to become stale after a while, and it's turned into a cycle of complaints from fans on Illumix's social media like, when is this character going to be added, or Illumix, please release a character, we're tired of seeing skins all the time, or just add Lefty and Fonte Freddy already. I know we got Fonte Freddy last year, but his two year wait just wasn't worth it, given how his mechanic was basically like everyone else. While some people can take this complaint way too far at times, it is a fair piece of criticism at the end of the day. Characters were one of the main reasons that made FNAF VR great and kept it alive. They helped shine into light into more forgotten characters of the franchise, and also helped ch change the gameplay up. We also haven't gotten characters that were speculated to be in the game, like Scrap Baby, or Nightmarian, Enduo 2, the rest of the nightmares. Or better yet, Lefty! Lefty was confirmed to be in the game, even before its release. We got hinted of him in one of the 2020 Christmas posters. Hell, we've been able to access his character model through an early alpha build of the game. We've waited two years for his additional release. When the hell is he coming? And when are the speculated characters going to be added? This is why special delivery has started to get boring. We hardly see any new characters introduced into this game, and the fact that there was only one new character released a year after Golden Freddy is ridiculously insane. I get creating a character takes a while, and I know it's difficult to make them stand out from the rest, but a year should not be the case. Anywho, we discussed this problem last because obviously characters aren't the only thing that make this game, and there were other things to look forward to. Speaking of which, the next problem is probably the main reason why characters almost never turn up. Too many skins. In March 2020, and after Mangle's addition to the game, Illumix introduced a new system in the game called Skins. What is a skin you may ask? A skin is pretty much a different version of a character. Kind of like a reskin, though not exactly. They have a trait about their designs that make them stand on their own. Whether it be made out of chocolate, being lit on fire, being Easter themed, or even a Quantic themed. 
critically. These skins got a mixed response from fans, mostly due to how Illumix catered to them more than the characters. And while this would become a problem later on, it was understandable at the time. We would get nothing but skins, whether people liked it or not. However, once characters like the Jackos and Plus Trap were introduced to the game, that's when the catering towards the skins became a noticeable issue. Now I want to say right off the bat that I'm not one of those skin haters who think skins should be gone. No, I think most of the skins are really good. Some like Shamrock Freddy, Chocolate Bonnie, Remaster Foxy, Toxic Spring Trap, and even the RK Mayhem skins are considered fan favorites. They also serve as an appetizer while we wait for the next character. But after Golden Freddy, the street of nothing but skins came back for no real payoff or reason why. It wasn't well bound to 2020, but in 2021, it just got out of hand. To give you an example, here's how many skins and characters we got in 2020, and here's the amount of skins and characters we got in 2021. See the problem here? This is not balanced at all. Now, I understand that it's easy, and that it's very enjoyable for Illumix to do, but when your fanbase is split into half of them wanting skins and half of them wanting characters, you have to appeal to both sides. If you only appeal to one side, then you'll only lose part of your fanbase because some of them don't like skins and are wanting more characters to appear in the game. Like, the Withers, the Nightmares, the Scrapped Animatronics, or even the Phantoms, or the Mediocre Melodies. Heck, I would even want a Bucket Bob! <laughs> now again, creating characters is a consuming process. We get that. But again, a year should not be the case. Especially when you put all your time and resource into making skin after skin after skin after skin! <laughs> and plus, I'm sure COVID stopped being an obstacle for them when they released Ballora. There are certain factors why some people don't like the skins. For one, outside their unique designs, they're just cosmetics that serve almost no purpose. Second, there's no variety, it's just finding the same base character over and over again. And it's much more apparent with characters like Bonnie, Sprain Trap, and Plus Trap. Those characters have gotten more skins than most of the characters on the roster, clearly because of their popularity and therefore brings them the most money. Especially with Sprain Trap, he has gotten way too many skins. And the skins for Plus Trap are ridiculously overpriced, but we'll touch on that part later. Overall, the problem in our eyes isn't the skins themselves, it's the balance between the release of new skins and new characters, and it only got worse over time. As they say, don't put all your eggs in one basket, don't focus all your time on just the skins, use some of that time to listen to feedback and fix the bugs that have been reported to you. Speaking of which... Oh wait, 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 wait. there's something else I forgot to share. One of the fun parts about the release of skins for FNAF AR is how you won't know what they're going to release either a new character or a new skin. There are even times me and Andrew made a few bets on whether the next event is going to release a character or a skin. <laughs> and I won twice! <laughs> yeah, you won twice, so what? Oh, you don't even know what happened after you lost. One time, for the Ancient Equinox event, Andrew lost a bet with me for a new character, and I bet it was a skin. And I made him sing the Gummy Bear song. Don't even mention that! Roll the clip! <laughs> yes, I'm oh, you son of a- <laughs> The bugs and glitches. Now, it's normal for a game to have bugs, especially on launch day. We all know what happened with Security Breach when it first released. However, it's unprofessional when a game has bugs to the point where the game is borderline unplayable and the company does nothing to acknowledge them. FNAF VR is probably the most bugged mobile game I've played. There were so many bugs in this game, I don't even know where to start. I say where, because this game isn't as broken as it once was. However, that does not change the fact that this game was practically unplayable for a ridiculously long period of time. I'm not even kidding. I would say around the October update was when the game's quality got worse. I legit could not enter an account without having the game crash on me. And I know many people had this issue as well, whether it be entering a battle, changing the tabs on the map, changing the suits on the workshop, or by entering the photo booth. No joke, there was other bugs in the game too, like the loader screen getting stuck at 90%, payments not going through, rewards not being received, and even the player getting a black screen. And the game only got more broken over time. But I think the worst part about all of this is that Illumix did nothing to fix these things. It would be one thing if they addressed it and state that some bugs are out of their control, but acting like nothing is wrong with your game will get you nowhere. It wasn't until July-August 2021 came around and Illumix finally decided to fix some things with the game, which on the other hand, I will give credit for. But on the other hand, it should have not taken that long to fix the freaking game! 
These bugs should have been dealt with as soon as they were reported. And even then, not all of them were fixed. And even some bugs that were fixed got broken again with future updates. For me, when the May update was released, it was able to resolve the crashing bug, and it only became a rare occurrence, the game was finally playable for me again. But once updates like the DLC and Fonte Freddy came in, it became as common as it was before the October update. It would crash every 5 minutes. So thanks a lot, Illumix. Well, it couldn't get any worse from here, can it? Wait. Oh, no. The May update. The May freaking update. Yeah, you guys saw this one coming. I think it's pretty much accepted in the community that this is the moment where FNAF AR died. On May 18th, 2021, Illumix released the gameplay update, which they were hyping up so much for and hoped that it will be the game's life changer. Unfortunately, it was anything but. A lot of problems came with the update and made the game so much worse than it originally was. It introduced a lot of new things like a completely revamped UI, a leveling system, health bars, and even animatronics being able to use Plus Trap CPU, which was ultimately removed for reasons unknown. Alright, just explain the new additions themselves, the update doesn't sound so bad, and that's because the problem isn't the new additions themselves, it's literally the way they're put into practice. To start off, the health bars are the most unnecessary thing to add to the game. I really do despise them. They, they not only make the fights longer and more tedious, but they make the, the game more pay to play in some stages. Instead of taking one shock to defeat a character, you need to do multiple shocks in order to defeat them fully. You even have health bars with Endo 01, Freddy Fazbear, or even Chica, basic enemies in the game. And you'll definitely need barriers when first encountering somebody like Foxy and Balloon Boy. Whereas before, the only time you really needed barriers were for characters like Springtrap, Toy Freddy, Plush Trap, or maybe even Toy Chica. I know that this problem isn't as bad as it was in the beginning, but there are still sections in the game where if you want to go further into the game, you have to pay a little bit of money. Yes, leveling up increases the damage of your shocker, and that's how you get better at fighting them. But the process of leveling up is a frustrating, grindy loop, and it takes forever to level up. Which is another problem. You receive the same amount of XP once you hit streak 10. The maximum you get is 40 XP, or slightly more. No matter how high of a level you are, your XP rate stays the same. How is this game supposed to be fun? This was supposed to be a fun party game that Scott wanted, not a pay-to-play farming XP simulator. What's even more dumb is that all the characters are locked behind an XP goal system in order for them to spawn on the map naturally. This wouldn't be an issue if the required numbers weren't so high. You have to be at level 12 to face off Chica for God's sakes. And you don't face off against someone like Springtrap until you're at level 25. So until then, and unless you have friends who trade, you're stuck fighting against the same characters who all act the same until you go up against somebody who doesn't act the same after Circus Baby. In the past, I've complained that the gameplay of this game can get boring since the characters act the same mostly, and that the story progresses slowly, but this update cranked this problem up by like 10. It's that bad. And no, we're not done yet. Illumix decided to add another thing that they thought was a great idea. Loot Boxes. Now, people from Fortnite, Apex Legends, Overwatch, or Star Wars Battlefront 2 would already know what loot boxes are, but if you don't know what they are, it's essentially a virtual version of gambling. You're basically spending a lot of money for a chance to win. And the boxes themselves are not guaranteed, they're randomized. Let's say you spent $20 for the loot box in this game after converting them into fast coins. Since the loot boxes are randomized, you might not get stuff like shields or even damage boosters. And if you're fighting against Springtrap, you might lose due to some bugs in the game, or you may not even get rewards. So basically, wasted a lot of money for a chance to win. It's frustrating, and I don't understand why Illumix thought this was a good idea to add into the game. How this got by Bass Scott, I'll never know. The gameplay went from being simple, flawed, yet unique, to a pay-to-win, fundamentally broken Pokemon Go wannabe. While the October update did ruin the unique concept for the game and the tension it had going for it where instead of the animatronics coming to you, you have to click on the icons in order to come to them. At least there was no pay to win BS or loot boxes. I hate to repeat myself, but if something isn't broken, don't freaking fix it. This whole update makes the game a slog to progress through. You do the exact same thing over and over and over again until you finally level up to a character who doesn't act the same. This update could have worked. If the helpers weren't a thing and the leveling next piece was, was better handled, then this could have been a passable update. 
It's just that in a Lumix fashion, they screwed it up. And there are other problems with this update, like the missed potential, they could have given Parts and Remnant more uses, given Bonnie and Chica their voices, change up the classic animatronics behavior a bit, or even give the players some achievement for a lock and everything. But of course, they didn't do that. Okay, now we're down to the last problem, and this is not only the biggest reason why this game flushed down the toilet, but is a direct cause to a lot of the problems I just stated. We have a lot to explain, so this segment might be rather long. So let's not waste any more time and discuss the biggest reason I played this game. Or should I say, company. Illumix. In the gaming industry, there are companies who do care about their work and try to learn from their past mistakes. But on the other hand, there are also companies who just don't care about what people think or say and care more about making money than making an actual good game. EA and Activision are prime examples of this. Even Nintendo had their moments, and Illumix is pretty much smack dab the middle. They weren't always like this though. They were once passionate developers who wanted to enhance the augment reality experience, they were open with the fanbase and even got into jokes now and again, and they were capable of listening to feedback when they got it. But nowadays, being open with the fanbase and listening to feedback would be the last thing on their mind, and that wouldn't be the only thing they would go as far as to do. Illumix have been called by many things from fans. They've been called ignorant, greedy, or borderline unprofessional. Which one do I think best describes them? How about all of the above? Illumix went from a passionate company to a company who simply doesn't care. They seem to think they're still their old selves like they were in the beginning, and they don't even notice how far they've fallen. Not even a little. A good example of Illumix's ignorance is how they choose to interact with the fans, whether it be feedback or leaving updates on other things. As we said earlier, there's no balance between new skins and new characters. When people say they're getting tired of the skins, they keep doing them. Whenever a serious issue with the game is brought up on either their social media or support team, nothing happens. Or it just takes forever for them to respond. A worst case scenario that could happen, however, is Lumix taking so long to respond to a refund request that it's already too late to file a dis dispute against PayPal. We're, of course, talking about a situation that happened to a fellow FNAF YouTuber, East Goes Boom. Basically, what happened is that East ordered over $200 worth of FNAF AR merch and never received it. He tried contacting their support team, but he didn't get a response until very later on. However, Illumix said that they couldn't refund his purchase and instead told him to file a dispute against PayPal. Unfortunately, since it took Illumix so long to get back to ETH, PayPal immediately denied his refund request. So as a result, he spent over $200 for nothing. Like, are you serious? That's not only unprofessional, but that's basically the equivalent of being scammed. I know there are a lot of other emails that are being sent out to them and that it's difficult to pinpoint every email, but still, you don't wait until the last minute to respond back to someone's refund request and only have to be denied by their bank. Another issue with the Lumix is that they're silent with the community. When a major update is in the works and it doesn't get released the day it was supposed to be released, Illumix says nothing. They do give a heads up when a new skin is going to get delayed, but not went with new updates. Like, when the May update was delayed after it was supposed to come out in April, we did get a teaser, but not a single reminder of delay was going to happen. They just went silent after two weeks and then finally released the update. Will they announce hints dropping in the following weeks for the upcoming DLC? They did do that all the way into November, roughly two months after the September update. And, and despite them saying the fall update would have dropped very soon, the Dark Circus Encore DLC didn't drop until late fall in December. With the way Illumix worded those announcements, it made it seem like the DLC would have dropped sometime in October, but instead we just had another blast in the past event, despite them saying they would have been drawing to a close, and on top of more radio silence from Illumix. That's another thing, Illumix is not transparent with the fanbase, or in general. Speaking of not being very transparent, there was an incident related to Michelle Amos, aka Belora's voice actress. When Belora was added to the game, Michelle Amos didn't reprise her role. We didn't know why, but we just assumed that since Belora's mechanic revolves around being silent, Illumix decided to keep her as a silent character and didn't bother to reach out to Michelle. However, around March 2021, somebody did ask her why she didn't voice her character in the game, and she had this to say. Yes, I have talked to both. Illumix scheduled me to voice something, then they bailed. Send them a message and express your feelings. Honestly, this is highly unprofessional behavior on Illumix's part. You don't just bail on somebody like that. It's like scheduling for a job interview with somebody who just applied for it, and then not allowing them to come in afterwards. And there, and there is more. 
Since the May update was very negatively received by fans, Illumix posted an image in the game around two days later, stating that they were actively addressing the issues that came with the update and were taking note of the feedback they received. At this time, the Wicked Tides event was starting and they told us to stay tuned for future updates. Okay, they're trying to fix the update while giving us more skins to keep us occupied. But did they went through with it and fix the update? Nope! Even after a month and a half, they started to work on the steampunk event and they did not address any of the issues the fans brought up, or even acknowledge anything wrong with the game since then. In other words, Illumix basically said, we're listening, but we don't care. This is why so many people have gotten more frustrated and impatient with Illumix. And people who defend Illumix would say, Oh, just be patient with them. It's their first game. Or, They're just a small team. Have more patience. First of all, they promised the update to be fixed, and they didn't do any of that and even went as far as to ghost Valora's voice actress before then, there is a fine difference between not knowing what you should or shouldn't do, and just being totally ignorant to others around you. If you can't deliver a promise, then don't make any promises. And on the topic of the updates being presumably delayed and them not telling us, it doesn't matter to response. It's your responsibility as a company to inform your fan base of these things. Being silent and acting like nothing is wrong is not the way to go. And these defenses don't always excuse Illumix's actions. While this is their first game, it's their first game that they've worked on since October 2018, which was confirmed in the interview with Daco, nearly four years ago at the time of this recording. So you should have a good understanding of what to do after one or two years. In regards to them being a small team, while that is true, it's a small team of experienced developers, and if an independent developer like Scott can fix bugs and acknowledge feedback, then why can't a fully functioning business? All of that could be done in less than half the time by a team the size of Illumix. I understand that augmented reality is more complicated than point and click, and I get plans change and stuff like that, but being a small team or work on your first game is not an excuse for poor communication or any of the stuff we just mentioned, but there's more to Illumix's problems, and that how they handled their business practices. Before we start, we fully understand that this is a free-to-play mobile game, so of course there's going to be microtransactions scattered around. But the microtransactions are not the issue. It is the prices on a lot of them that we don't Bruh. like. And not just the prices, but for how they put their business decisions to practice. The first time this happened was back in 2019 when Frostbear and Toy Chica made it into the game. Their stuff on the shop was insanely expensive. Just. Take a look at how many fast coins they were charging just for the winter bundle! Now yes, these were purchasable through fast coins, but you basically had to spend $20 to $40 just to get enough coins to purchase one of the things you wanted. You essentially had to buy the $100 truck of fast coins just to get the winter bundle alone. Thankfully, Illumix and even Scott addressed this and were able to take care of things and after that, the prices were handled better. Not perfect, but way better than Frostbear and Toy Chica's. Sadly, this has become a thing of the past as Illumix have gotten very greedy over the past two years. Now, of course, there's nothing wrong with companies wanting to make money. That's the point of a business after all. However, it becomes another thing when they start doing bad decisions to earn money, like making the game pay to play, introducing loot boxes into the game, or even selling their stuff for absurd prices. The skins have gone from $7.99 to $9.99 for no good reason, and plush traps prices are just bad. Like 20 bucks for a skin it's not an okay price. I know Plush Trap has mixed reality within him, and his environment changes with every skin of him, but that's still not a justification for charging it for $20. You can get two FNAF games from Scott for that price. Even a tub of fast coins with a skin along with some lures end up costing $40. The same price for Security Breach. You can get Help Wanted's DLC of Curse of Dreadbear for the same cost of a skin. Trust me, the pricing is way worse when you live in Canada. It's not just the microtransactions, even some of their merch went for rather absurd prices. And the same goes for the Dark Circus Encore DLC. I'm not talking about the mode itself, I'm talking about the price. It originally cost $13, and while that seemed much, it wasn't so bad. That was until we found out that that was actually a fan price Loomis called it, and had the audacity to buff it up to $20! The DLC was just 15 minutes of solving puzzles, facing off two enemies, and go up against Great Escape Golden Freddy. Come on, that's not worth the amount of money that it is. I'd say an $8 or $10 price tag would have been better. As good as the DLC was, it's not worth $20. And keep in mind, the reward is just yet another skin. And as I said earlier, the skins are just cosmetics that have no influence on the game, and are supplementary for the game's already bad business practices. 
I get why some prices are the way they are, but for the most part, these are still way too much. If they were lowered by at least half, then more people would buy and Illumix would see more for profit. But of course, they're not going to do that. As a matter of fact, that's Illumix's problem in general. They don't care. And the fact that they thought that paid DLC was the solution to fix their game just further proves that they only cared about profit. And even if the DLC was good, that doesn't change the game at its core from being fundamentally broken. You can't just work on a paid expansion pack when the base game is just empty. Yes, the DLC was good, but I can't say the same for the base game. A DLC shouldn't be a requirement for the game to be good. The game on its own should still be functional and fun for the player. If the game is only good with the aid of a paid expansion pack, then it's clearly missing something and it will not sell or do well with critics, period. In conclusion, FNAF ER's special delivery was ruined by a problem that was led by other problems prior to the biggest one, and that problem was a company who kept making bad decision after bad decision, ignored criticism, and proved numerous times that they didn't care about the fans and wanted to try to pull as much cash as possible. It's honestly really sad to see this game and company go down the path that it went. The game used to be immersive, fun, and was straight to the point, and Illumix proved that they had talent. They could have revolutionized the augmented reality experience with this game, and they did have passion for what they did. But once all the brownie points and money went through Illumix's head, that's when they fell off. And the same thing happened to the game. FNAF ER is viewed as the worst FNAF game for a reason. And not just by a gameplay standpoint, but by an ethical stand. This game's cash grab nature goes against everything Scott believed in. Regardless if you like Scott or not as a person, at least he was someone who cared about their work and listened to criticism when he got it. Whereas Illumix had the polar mindset, that being, it's FNAF, people will love it regardless, continue to what they thought was the right direction, and milk the game for all that they could before it eventually died. The fact that they supposedly abandoned FNAF AR to pursue it in other things and not give the fans a final farewell just goes to show how little they cared for the fans. Not just that, but there are even rumors that the HQ of Illumix is rumored to be a madhouse and that Kieran Sinha, the CEO, is an irresponsible person who doesn't like video games and is also disgenuous while not caring too much about the employees. It's unknown if this review on Glassdoor exposing Illumix is true or not, however, so please take this with a grain of salt. But if it is real, then I'm not surprised. If they don't care about the fans, then they don't care about their own people either. Why would you work on video games if you're not in the video games yourself? If that's not an obvious red flag, then I don't know what is! As long as Illumix works on this game, FNAF AR will never reach its fullest potential. Because Illumix doesn't care. They did once but not now. People have stated there are many issues before and they still haven't changed, and they never will. Some companies just never change. You could say what you will about games like FNAF 3, 4, FNAF World, Sys Location, and even Security Breach, but at least those games were made with effort and were made by people who do care. While Security Breach was a bad game, at least it had some amount of effort put into it. As for Illumix, I don't see them having a bright future, considering that Akiran is following NFT accounts on Twitter and that one of the lead designers works for NFTs. At this point, I just had enough. I'm right behind you, bro. I'm fed up with them too. Illumix, thanks for carrying FNAF on its legs during 2020, but now it's time for us to move on. Now do everyone a favor and get lost. Oh, and have fun diving into the NFT territory. I know we've rambled on for quite a bit, but we just wanted to say something's on our minds. Before we end off the video, I just want to say that as much as I don't like Illumix, that doesn't go for everyone. It only goes towards the heads of the company. I think the artists and few other people who work there are talented for what they do, and I'm sure they're nice people. But quite frankly, they deserve so much better than have their talent waste on such an awful game like this. And, and as much of a ditch hole it was in, it could have been saved. It had something going for it. It was just put into the wrong hands. And if this game does end up getting pulled from the App Store and Illumix loses their FNAF license, they had it coming.